This video will discuss some more advanced rules for integrals in some more complicated situations. So just as we had for derivatives, we have a scalar multiple rule and we have a sum rule. Just like derivatives, integrals are linear operators. So what happens here is when we have a constant times a function, the integral of a constant times a function is just the constant times the integral of that function. Whenever you have a constant in either an integral or a derivative, you can just factor that constant out and take the integral or derivative of the function. Providing this constant is just some real number as I have mentioned there, although this works for complex numbers too. Okay, so an example of this would be the integral of 12 times x cubed, which would be according uh, so x cubed, the integral of that according to the polynomial rule would be 1 fourth x to the fourth. So 1 fourth times 12 is 3. So we can just factor out the 12, multiply at the end, 3x to the fourth is this integral. Once again, note that I'm ignoring constants of integration, assuming that the constant of integration is set to 0. All right, the integral of 4 over x dx. Well, according to the inverse rule, the integral of 1 over x dx is natural log of x. So 4 times that is just 4 times the result, 4 times log of x. Okay, the sum rule, just as it was for derivatives, the integral of f of x plus g of x, that's the integral of f of x plus the integral of g of x. Right, so if we have cosine of x plus 2e to the x, the integral of that function is just the integral of cosine to plus the integral of 2e to the x, which is the integral of cosine is sine. The integral of e to the x is e to the x times 2 is 2e to the x. So our result is sine x plus 2e to the x. All right, uh, two more rules that are... Uh, are somewhat related to uh, various cases from, from derivatives, but not quite. Integration by substitution is sort of the uh, integral analog of the chain rule, but not exactly. So if we have the integral of f prime of g, g prime of x, dx, this is, inter this is equal to f of g of x. So this is... <clears throat> So if we do an example here, if we have 2x times e to the x squared, well, <clears throat> what we can do here is we'll say, let's set x squared equal to a, another variable called u. So if we substitute that, then we have du is equal to 2x dx. So taking the derivative of both sides, we get du equals 2x dx. So we have the integral of e to the u, where dx is equal to du over 2x. So we substitute in this uh, du over 2x for dx. Then we get e to the u du over 2x. This 2x cancels with that 2x, which is just coincidental. This only works whenever you have, whenever you have this value just sitting inside the integral. So those cancel, and then we get the we get e to the u as the result, and u is equal to x squared, so this integral is equal to e to the x squared. So that's only going to work whenever you have something where, you know, this works out perfectly that the result of the chain rule is just sitting as your function to integrate. All right, you have integration by parts, which is sort of the reverse of the product rule for derivatives. So here we have the integral of u times the derivative of v. So u of x times v prime of x. This is equal to u times v minus the integral of v times the derivative of u. Or you might say u dv, or sorry, the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So to see this working in practice, we have the integral of x times sine of x with respect to x. So if we set u equal to x and we set du equal to dx, we can set dv equal to sine x dx as we need the other part of our integral. We could have chosen either to be u or dv, 
but typically you want the thing that has the uh, where uh, it's going to work out the the best in terms of what v and d u are, making this a much easier integral to work with than the one we had at first. So u times v is going to be the first result we get here. So that's uh, x times cosine x. I believe we might need this to be negative here. I think we do. Excellent. Movie magic once again. Okay, so we have u times v is, is x times negative cosine, or negative x cosine x. Then we have minus the integral of v du. So that's negative cosine times dx. So this negative and that negative cancel to give us a positive. So we have the integral of cosine x dx. So now we, we know we chose correctly in terms of choosing u and dv because our second integral is much simpler than our first. Our second integral is just cosine, which we know is its integral is sine. So the integral of x sine x is equal to negative x cosine x plus sine of x. So uh, for these two, those work all the time and are uh, very easy to work with. Integration by substitution and by parts only works some of the time. It only works whenever your integral is just conveniently happens to work out that way. Uh, in general, you won't be able to integrate every single uh, integral you come across just as uh, for derivatives you can take the derivative of any function you come across but integrals sometimes become very difficult and oftentimes you'll have to resort to looking them up in a table of integrals or using some type of math solver uh, to get an idea of what's going on.